Good morning, everybody. Today is Sunday, October 23rd. It is about going on 7.15 in the morning. I was up a little bit earlier, probably around 6.45. I actually have to do work work, like the work I get paid for today. But right now I'm preparing and prepping. Um, got a little mail call. Ordered some more sugarloaf pineapples. Again, thank you, Lev Farmer. Um, so I have three tops from the ones I got last month hardening off in my shed. And I'm going to do, I decided I'm going to do what Michael Farmer does, which is um, put them in containers. Get some big, I have big containers out there and um, put them in containers instead of try to put them in the ground because I don't live in a tropical area so um therefore i want to be able to bring them up under the um cover patio so what i'm going to do today is um cut up the pineapples and i think i'm just going to go ahead and can these i i have to admit to something the last ones i cut up i left them in the refrigerator too long and they went bad and they were good too. So today we're not doing that. I got a lot to do today. Also, I got my elderberry cuttings from the Leds. The Leds be on it, you guys. They be on it. I got my rooting power. I had to go outside real quick to the shed and get the rooting, um, rooting powder. But um, yeah, I got my elderberry cuttings, I think yesterday. And they show you what to do. I got my cups ready. And um, I ordered I ordered two. So I'm going to try this again. Two separate cups. I'm going to try it again. Um, I tried it before. I, they were able to root. And then I think I put them out too, too quickly. So um, what I'm going to do is leave them in the cups a lot longer. And then I'm going to put those in containers, too. So, um, my cacao seeds are right there. Um, I got, I had a seedling heating pad. So, I put them on, at, and during the day, I turn on the pad. Um, I don't know how good they're doing. The cacao plant that I got from Lady Led is doing very, very well. And I'm going to keep her in the shed and just keep, replanting her into bigger containers because it's getting cold 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 right now and in fact here's the giant loofah i got um it's kind of turning yellow i want it to turn a little bit more yellow and then i'm gonna do a video of me peeling it um if it doesn't rain too early oh, i love the way loofah smells sorry smells like a man um, a clean man um, I might go out and start getting other loofahs I have a lot of green ones out there and you kind of want to pick them when they're yellow um, when they turn brown they're hard I have some brown ones that I need to pick I need but you have to soak them and then you peel them and get the seeds um, so yeah I have a lot I have to do I also have I'm gonna put together a little short video from my friends um, book release last night it was really good. He signed the book, and I'll show you what it what it says on the inside. It was nice. They had a taco guy there. I bought my tacos home. <laughs> I bought my tacos home, and um, and I have apples. I still have apples. I need to dehydrate. Um, I was supposed to do them a while ago. I buy these big cosmic apples. And they still haven't turned brown yet. So I want to cut them up and see how they look on the inside. They're getting a little soft, but that don't mean nothing to me. I want to cut them up and see how they look on the inside. And I got my dehydrator, put the cinnamon and the sugar on top in and um, dehydrate those. So I'm going to get started on these pineapples. And I'm really not going to videotape it because I just, um, sometimes when you're a YouTuber, and sometimes when you have a lot going on, you don't have time to um, to videotape everything. But I'll show you the um, the end the end results. Um, well, maybe I'll show myself cutting up one. Don't take that long to cut them up. So anyway, 
um, and probably doing the elderberries too. So anyway, let me go ahead and get started because once I'm done um, doing all this, I gotta hit my office and I gotta um, I gotta work and I gotta put that video together for my friend Nate Faith. Um, book release. It was really nice. Also, I have a friend <clears throat> who does like designs for openings and baby showers. It's called Bubbly Creation. She does the balloon, but she's local. So she's in the pass area, which includes Cala Mesa, Yucaipa, Beaumont, Banning, um, the Morongo Casino and Indian area. I'll say Redlands, Hemet, um, maybe like Reno Valley, maybe Paris, she does those areas because she's local, but I'm going to put her information, um, I'm going to let you see some of her stuff too, because she did Nate's um, book party, she did the bubble creations in the background and stuff, um, so I think that's it for now, let me go ahead and get started with cutting up this pineapple. <laughs> just cut up the sugar loaf pineapple <clears throat> now I'm gonna go offline I'm gonna clean this off and then I'm gonna start on the next pineapple and then I'll show you me peeling the tops and putting them in the water so this is the way Michael Farmer does it he takes off 
two to three inches and he puts it in water and he watch the roots grow. He probably cleans the water a lot. So I'm going to try those. I already have three hardening off. I'm pretty sure I may order some more um, before the end of the year because I do want to grow. I just want to try to grow as much as everything as I can. I'm still trying with those cacao beans. Um, they may grow roots or they may not. I don't know. I have the one cacao plant that le uh, that lady led gave me that's doing good. But um, let me go ahead and get on this. It's going on 730 now because I need to get this stuff done so that I can go in there and do some actual work and not have such a bad Monday. Okay. See you guys in a minute. I just wanted to show this pineapple. This one is like extra pretty and white. Okay, let me get back to getting this stuff done. Hello, everyone. Let's see. It is now 8, going on 8.20. So, I forgot that I needed vermiculite and perlite for the elderberries. So, I came out to the shed because that is where my vermiculite and perlite is. Okay? Um, I turned the fan off my seedlings and I have the heater on. My seedlings are doing pretty good. This light went out. That's okay. Um, so, yeah. And I think I'm going to do the same for rooting the pineapple. So, I went and just rewatched um, Micro Farmer's video again. And he had his in glass mason jars, which was really cool. And he just used water. And he got the roots to grow um, nine inches. And he said he got slimy. Then he took that water and poured it in a pineapple, which is true. I think I'm going to put a little perlite and vermiculite in the bottom of the cup for the pineapples. See, this is what they look like. So these are the ones I just did. And let me show you the ones that I just hardened off. Let me show you. So this is what it looks like when they harden off. Okay. So I'm letting them harden off for still kind of wet right there, actually, a couple of more weeks for a month. And then I'm going to plant them into soil in individual containers like Mark or Farmer did. Whew. Had to bring everything out here. It's cold outside. I don't see any hint of rain. In fact, let me check and see if it rained. I could check this container here. No. Nope. It did not rain yesterday. It was supposed to. It was mighty cold. It was worrying, but I didn't. So let me go ahead and get the vermiculite and perlite, which I have on the chair right here. And this stuff can be kind of messy. Your vermiculite and perlite. I thought I had... Here we go. My handy dandy tools here. This came off. It shouldn't have come off. Put you back in here. My handy dandy tools. And just want this one. See? I have measuring spoons and all of that good stuff. And put these back on the thing. So I'm going to say this is the perlite. This is what it looks like. Perlite. And I forget how dusty it is too. And this is the vermiculite. Pour it in there. And mix, mix, mix. Perlite. And I always take one of these. Mix, 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 mix. And put a little bit of the vermiculite. A little bit more than make the light in there. Just a little bit more. Whew. 
and they give you the instructions. The lids give you the instructions. kind of dusty in the shed so directly into moisten soil mixture a couple of plastic bag okay and they wrap it in a paper towel here's my rooting hormone I poured some of it in here it says immediately remove moistened paper towel. Wish I could have did it yesterday, but I had a busy day. <clears throat> That's that perlite. Okay. So you pour your rooting hormone, which I forgot to do last time in here and, and now the water that i had in the cups i'm going to let me lower this let me see if i can lower this you can't really see well i'm going to pour some water into the vermiculite and perlite that dust is coming up gotta be careful and i'm just going to take this and i'm going to stir it into my rooting hormone okay I got it real good and then I'm going to stick this in there all the way down in there and pour some more water and then I'm going to take the plastic bag that they sent it in, and it's dry, and put it on top. Because it says to cover with a plastic bag, being careful not to allow the bag to rest on the cutting in a well-lit spot. So I may be pulling out... I do have some more um, grow lights. might be hooking up some more grow lights okay and and then you cut the tip i remember that you cut the, like the, the little bit of the tip of the plastic bag just so it can have a little air i remember that washing lead farmer Get a little bit of air. Got it. Elderberry cutting. Bam. Then I do have some grow lights that I'm going to um, hook up here. So now, where's my other one? Right here. My brain, I, I swear, sometimes my brain is like a fart in a wind, sorry. So let's do the next one. Being sure not to get the perlite dust in my face. Take my handy dandy mixer, which is a screwdriver. <laughs> my 
My dehumidifiers are working good today. Okay. Put a little water in the vermiculite and perlite. This is what it looks like. Okay. And this is the water that I had got in the house. I just poured it out from the cup and put it in here. Okay. The next elderberry cutting, unwrap it. Now, I did get the roots to grow on the last cuttings. I just messed up when I planted them outside. They just, they just didn't do well. And I think I planted them outside too soon. So it looks like I'm going to have a lot of plants in the shed this fall because I want them to grow. So Lead Farm always says it doesn't matter which side you put it on. So it looks like I have a little nub there. I'm going to put it on this side. And then I'm going to put it in the rooting hormone real, real, real good. Like I did the other one. And I'm going to try some rooting hormone on the pineapples. And see what happens. And I am going to order more pineapples. I'm just doing a lot of experimenting right now. I haven't put my... Uh, little hydroponic system. I cleaned it out, but I haven't put anything else in it yet. So there's the rooting hormone. And I'm going to stick it down in there like that. I might put some more water in the other one. Put the plastic bag they gave me over it without it touching the elderberry. You know, Led Farmer did a video the other day telling people to grow. I think I've been watching him close to two years now. I started growing in 2019 before I I um, kind of bumped into him on, on YouTube one night. And I said, this man is hilarious and he knows what he's talking about. I got to watch him. And been watching him ever since. It may have been in 2020. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We're in 2022. I think it was 2020 when I found them because I started gardening in 2019. It was like a, almost a year after I started gardening. And been a dedicated subscriber ever since. Ever since. Just, they're just him and his wife just know so much. And I think we as YouTubers all learn for each other because I'm in Southern California. They're in Carolina? South Carolina? I forget. Like I said, my mind is like a fart in the wind. I'm going to, you stay up there. Push it up. It's all the way down in there. This is a tall elderberry cut. That's all right. And then every couple of days, I check the water and add water to it. Now I'm going to go and cut that bag, like you said. Some air to that. Bam. Elderberry cut. Okay, so I'm going to sit that over here. Now, I'm going to put some more rooting powder. You can get this at your local Home Depot or you can order it online. I have two containers of it. In fact, I probably should have been using this one before I opened that one. That's okay. Put this one back. Um, the way this world is going, I suggest you stock up on your supplies like the rooting hormones and and stuff like that because you don't know if you're going to be able to get certain things and this though should last me a, a long time but i just want to be able to make sure i have some so now we're going to do the two pineapples aren't those pretty look how pretty those pineapples are hmm. so do a little perlite and a little vermicon not like not like what I did before and this is an experiment you guys I watched Michael Farmer he just put his in straight water I don't know if he used any vermiculite or hormones or anything um, like that oh that light just turned on but um, yeah I'm just doing I'm just testing it with this 
Because I'm like, if the elderberries do it, then maybe the pineapple could do it. And I'm just using a little bit of perlite and a little bit of vermiculite on the pineapples. I'm not going to um, cover the pineapples with um, plastic. I've got plastic wrap, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to pour a little water in there. I'm going to pour more than a little water. I'm going to fill it up. Okay. So this is just the experiment. I really, 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 really don't know um, if this is going to work or not. And like I said, I'll be ordering more pineapples and I have the other three hardening off over there and I think I need more water yeah. and I'm just going to put the pineapple in here over fit smush 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 it in here and let me pull out my zero water filter filtering system here because I have a dehumidifier I got two dehumidifiers that are full and I could use that water and I still have some left I need to fill these up before it starts raining actually because I want to put some more water in that but that's what it looks like okay so And I'm not going to speed up this video because I want you to see what I'm doing. Just dropped another water bottle. Sorry. I'm going to fill those up with water. So this is my one of my dehumidifiers. Yep, yep. And, and this is my zero water pitcher. No, this is a Brita, sorry. It's not a zero water, it's a Brita. And I probably don't have to clean the water, but I'll, when you're trying to root the plants, you want to have as clean a water as you can. And just going to pour it into here. And it looks like I'm going to need, need some more paper towels to go in the house and get some more paper towels out here. And sometime the water, okay, got it. So I'm thinking, um, hopefully my electric vehicle will be ready next month and I will bring it home. Hopefully I can afford it. We'll see, because I ordered it. Why are you still leaking? Oh, dehumidifier, come on. Sorry, just a minute, you guys. And, um, everybody I'm back just move the elderberry cuttings over here going to move this out of the way I'm trying to keep things organized um, in this shed come on Britta what you doing? There we go. Now it's now it's coming out. Acts so weird sometimes. That's why Lad has a Berkey. That's okay. The Brita do for now. <clears throat> now I have my black dehumidifier over here, and that one's halfway full too. So. to use that one and put it in here and with these dehumidifiers with the dehumidifiers sometimes after you pour the water you have to clean them out because they get um, dust and crap and stuff in them 
That's why you want to filter the water. You never want to drink directly out of the dehumidifiers. Okay. And I use it for my seedlings and if I'm watering something in here. Um, in the summertime, it was so hot in here that these would fill up like every day. Like it was taking all of the um, water out of the air. It's like really moist in here. And so now I'm going to pour the water into the Brita to filter out the water. And sometimes water gets stuck on the other side. Got it. back on okay so while the water's pouring in there bring this back over here and um perlite and vermiculite Before I leave out of here, I'm going to fill up my water containers with the hose outside. Because even though I have the dehumidifiers, they don't accumulate a lot of water like all the time. So I want to make sure I have enough water because it's going to rain and I'm not going to want to be going back into the house and. Um, and carrying the bottles outside so I just go to my water hose and even though the water comes to my water hose I still pour it in the Brita and filter out the water just when you're dealing with seedlings and stuff you you kind of want as good as water as you can and then when the plant gets older they'll they'll be okay so see water's going in there and Still a little water on top, so don't pour out, please. And that's what the what the dehumidifiers help you with. No usage on your water bill. And I do have a, you know, I have a water container. I'm gonna go pour the water. I catch water on the side of the house, duh. And rooting hormone for the pineapple. Stick it in there. Ooh, it's a lot of water on that one. little too much that's okay I'm gonna put it over here by the cacao plant and if the water drips out it'll drip out in this thing over here bam good girl and I am gonna pour some more water into this one okay back you guys we're just getting this together
that's how you got to do it. Sometimes you got to improvise. Let me take the charger off of here. Phone. And I'm going to show you what, oops, what everything looks like. So that is the cacao plant. Move this back. That is the cacao plant. These are the elderberry cuttings and these are the pineapples. As you can see, I have light coming in from the window here. So everything is getting light. Um, I'm debating if I should put some grow lights on here. I'm really debating about it. I just may put some grow lights on here, but we'll see. Right now they're getting natural light from the sun. This is one of my seedling tops, so I have everything sitting in here. As you can see, the cacao plant has more growth going on right there. So I'm really excited. I keep her watered, a fertilizer once a week. I think this plant is going to be inside this shed for a while. In my city, in the past area here, it does snow two to four times a year. It just does. Um, so I have these plants here. I don't know how well they would do. It does rain and snow in Left Farmer's area. However, his elderberry plants are mature and they're old and they just they just produce all the time. These are babies, so I have to protect the plants. So now what I'm gonna go to do is go get some of the water from the side of my house out of my rain barrel and put it into my water bottles here and then um, I'll be right back. Well, I'll take, the, I'll take the camera with me so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm on the side of my house where my rain barrel is. There is a screen on top of here, but the water's still dirty. It doesn't filter that well. And I'm gonna turn this on and get some dirty water. Out in the rain barrel. This is what you call being sustainable, you guys, okay? Instead of me turning on my water hose, I'm getting the water from here, and then I put it in my Grita um, filtering system. And it's cold out here right now. And, um, and I use that to feed my seedlings and stuff like that. It takes a little while, but hey, it works. I will not be drinking this water because I haven't uh, boiled it and steamed it and all that stuff. can see it's not the cleanest but it does get filtered by hitting that screen a little bit then I'm going to take these bottles and probably going to waste a lot of water but it's better than me turning on my water hose just to feed my ceiling sometimes I do turn on the water hose if I'm trying to do stuff quickly but I know it's going to rain and I know this water is going to get replenished. Two. And I plan on getting a whole rain gutter system. See how much that is. And catching water. Hopefully you can hear me. As you can see, here's my waters. One, two, three. It's not the cleanest, but like I said, I filter it in the Brita when I go back into the shed. And I also use the water from my dehumidifiers instead of me having to turn on the water here in Southern California. Just another way for us to conserve, as they tell us. 
and I'm using water from Mother Nature. Ugh, tired of bending over. Okay, let's go back to the shed. I'm back in the shed. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, phew. All right. So, just to kind of, uh oh, so I want to go down no more. Sorry, you guys. I does, but okay. There we go. <sighs> So now you see, see if I can move this over here. Okay. It's kind of not wobbly. Anyway. So here's the waters. Here's my Brita. And here are the three waters I got from the rain barrel. See? One, two, three. It's not clean, but it's not filthy dirty, but I wouldn't drink it. And I'm just going to take it. And I'm just going to pour it. Because I'm not going to use this water for drinking right now. In fact, it's almost time to change this Brita pitcher, um, filter. And... That's what I do. And that water is going to get filtered through the Brita water system here and get clean and fill up. And then I don't have to worry about um, going out, coming out in the rain for, because it may rain some more this week. The next few days I have enough water for my seedlings over here. And I think. I thought I had another grow. I do have another grow light. I have this one right here. And I'm thinking about hooking it up for these because the elderberries need light and I don't think it would hurt the other plants also. But for now, until I make a decision, I'll let you know. And that's it. Um, I'm going to go in the house, cut up those apples, start cutting them, see how they're looking. And then I'm going to um, put cinnamon and sugar on them and put them in my um, dehydrator in the house and have some dried apple snacks. Um, I will show myself doing that if they look bad. Most likely I won't get through it. But for now... I'll catch you in a few minutes. Okay, so I turned on the grow lights. Um, let me show you what I did. I was able to take the plug off and then just hook it into my extended outlet under here as a USB drive. I got a lot of stuff hooked up over there, the black one. And these grow lights have an automatic timer, so I didn't have to hook them up to my timers down there. Um, have it for sorry 12 hours okay and it has a little clip and I just put the grow lights right there okay so today I basically just showed you how to use what you have I don't have a lot of stuff I can't afford a Berkey right now I wish I could afford a Berkey but I have my Brita pitcher I use my rain water that I captured because I can't drink it and put it in my Brita pitcher because this water is just for the seedlings and stuff. I have my tea from the house. I use the plastic bag that the leads gave me. I have my supplies, my vermiculite and my perlite. Um, I have lots of solo cups and stuff and I just use it. I already have my rooting hormone and I have extra grow lights. I think I have another grow light but it may be one of the magnetic ones or on the stand but these grow lights are perfect because um you just put them on a clip clip them in they're fine they'll turn off in about 12 hours um and then i'm done i have my heater on i just turned my heater off and um yeah just use what you have use what you got and 
and try to grow. Um, I'm hoping that eventually I will get a rain gutter system. Wink, wink. Um, fingers crossed. On the back of the house and able to capture more rainwater instead of me having to use my hose. Um, I also want to get a sink put back here because it's just so much, so much better when you have a sink. You can clean stuff off a lot easier. Um, but I probably still would, would use the rainwater um, a little bit more. Maybe I can get a sink, put the sink somewhere back here and hook it up to the rainwater, you know, and have a filtering system that way. Just You just have to be more sustainable in Southern California um, where I am and use what you have. I do live in an HOA, so I am very cautious about what I grow and what I put on my home. I wouldn't put rain gutters on the front of the home, but I can put them on the back of the home as long as it's not visible from the street. Those are the rules for my HOA. Um, I planted a tree in front of this particular lady shed because they don't want the shed to be visible from the street and the tree is, seems to be doing very well. Um, I do plan on getting more trees in November, peach trees. I do want to get a pond, but I'm wavering because that is the use of water. So what I'm thinking is that I may plant more fruit trees in the grass. So that way it'd be less grass in the backyard and I have more fruit trees. Thinking about switching some stuff around in the tree area of my garden but I'll let you know what plans are in the future I'm not sure yet but I'm trying to continue to grow all the food I want but be water sustainable at the same time in fact they were talking about it I don't know if it was on good more America but I missed it but I'm gonna look it up on YouTube about Californians and water so um, the electric car is one thing that I need and the rain gutters and the water saving system is another thing that has just been moved up on my priority list because um, I may have to pay money up front, but it's going to save me in the long run. And that's what I that's what I need. So for now, I'm going to go in the house and I'm going to start cutting on those apples because I want to get out of this shed and lock it up and just let it do its thing, kind of straighten up here. And I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, everybody, so I made sure I ate some breakfast first, first before I got started. So I went and I washed these apples with um, warm soap, um, salty water. It says use soap and water, but I use like, um, what is that, um, baking soda and salt and warm water. So I have my dehydrator book here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and peel them, cut across in one-fourth inch slices, cut the slices in half, spray with lemon juice evenly in dehydrator, and I also have my cinnamon and sugar right here. So yeah, I see soft spots, and I also have my, ooh, come on, oh, it's down. my plastic bag here to cut stuff away. I do have an apple core, but um, these cosmic apples are so big that the core gets stuck on them. There we go. I'm going to cut the bottoms off. If you want to know about my knives, this is a Cuisinart set that I got. I'll pick that up later. I got at... Um, Costco. I love this peel. I'm going to peel them. And then each slice I'm going to go ahead and dip in the lemon juice. I see a part that I need to cut away. It's too soft. You can also um, dehydrate the apple peels, but I'm not going to do that. But I could put the apple peels in my super juice outside. So you notice a theme with the video, using your scraps, not having a lot of waste. Saw me using my rainwater, 
um, this morning. Yeah, I think I'm going to pop open the top of the super juice. Hopefully, I'll get done before it starts raining. If not, I'll just close up this bag and um, wait till it stops raining and then throw it out there. I got We got a couple of these pillars. We got them from Williams-Sonoma. Best pillars we had ever had. We had an old pillar that my mother had had for years. And um, it was all rusted. It was gross. So I said, we need some, we need some pillars in the house. So I got some pillars. So now I'm just going to cut them. Apples are still pretty good. I think I might save those apple seeds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Try to make an apple tree. We'll see. See if I can make a apple tree out of this. It won't fruit for about 900 years, but we'll see. You never know unless you try, right? Go ahead and um, see if we can germinate these. Ooh, two big seeds right here. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my handy knife here and just cut that out. It is now 10.15. Let's see if we can get done by... 12 o'clock so I can go work. That's not the best cutting job there, but we got it out and cut that out. See if I... It's a good apple. It's a good apple. Put my tea over here. Put the apple seeds right there. Just cut that down. Cut that out. If I have too many apples, I may just cut some up and take take some to work. You can't preserve everything all the time. Now I'm just going to do thin slices. Can you guys see this? Make sure you can see this. Good apple. Cutting them as thinly as I can. I'll eat that. Because these are supposed to be in a dehydrator for 10 hours. How many hours? 10 to 12 hours. We're going to do 12. I think I'm going to eat this thick one. Okay, so here's a real thin one. That's a good apple. I've had these apples for a few weeks, which makes me wonder why they still good, but whatever. Need to grow. Hopefully my apple trees will start fruiting next year. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, finish cutting these, and then I'll let you see the final results. Hello everybody. Okay, so I've literally just cut up two apples 
and dip them all in lemon juice and look what I have like literally they're all dipped in lemon juice so now I'm gonna take my cinnamon and sugar and I'm just sprinkling it on this because I actually think this is enough to put in a dehydrator I have five apples left that's hilarious and then I'm gonna take the apples Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you see it now? And you have there. I dipped them all in the lemon juice right here. That is my ice maker. Sorry, you'll hear it a lot. And um, put these on the bottom. Put these on top. And I'm just sprinkling them with cinnamon and sugar. So I could have a nice healthy snack to take to work. And I'm going to put the dehydrator on for 12 hours. Got to get these under here. Put these on top. You know, it takes a lot of work to preserve food, but it's well worth it when you can have um, a healthy snack. It's way, way well worth it. And if I see that I need to cut up and peel more apples, I will. It's only 1041 you guys in a minute I'll be like have these in the dehydrator and then I'll make the video from yesterday's book release and then I'll be in there working ha ha okay. I mean, literally, literally two apples peeled and cut, and they are delicious apples. They are so good. Dipped in lemon juice, gonna put them in a dehydrator. Off to the dehydrator. Hello, everyone. Okay, so I got three trays of the apple slices. I put them on these because they were kind of dripping a little bit. So we're going to turn the dehydrator on for temperature. Oops. Start. Temp. Oops. 125. Time. 12 hours. That's it. It's doing it now. Okay. So that is the end of this video of today. I just got to go clean up and then I'm heading into my office to get some um, work done. It smells like apple cinnamon and, and sugar in here. The other apples, I may cut up one or two. Um, taking the works they were really good and i'm telling you they those apples have been sitting here for about three weeks they're cosmic apples now why they haven't gone completely bad i don't know um i don't know what variety of apple they belong to but they lasted a long time you guys and um yeah so that's it so i'll see you guys all 
maybe on the New Orleans Gardener live today at five o'clock. Okay? All right. So as I always say, please find peace within yourself and please be peaceable with each other. I absolutely love you all. Have a wonderful Sunday. Hey everybody, I just remembered that I'm putting on my boots that I have to get the rest of my loofahs. Let's unlock. Um, oops, sorry, out here because um, the temperature has changed drastically and it is going to be under 50 degrees at night. It's going to get up in the 70s. And as you can see, it's kind of cool out here. Here, my wind chimes going. And um, <laughs> it's going to get under 50 degrees. It's going to be in the 40s. So I'm going to put my arm thing on. And um, yeah, I got to. Hey, she does this. Sorry. And um, I gotta get my loofahs because they're real green right now, and some of them, them are small. But if I allow them to stay on here, um, they are they're going to go bad. So um, let me go ahead and get these loofahs, you guys. Let me show you. Here we are. They're pretty big. Pretty big. Let's get these right here. We'll just let them turn yellow. Cause if I don't take them off, they're they're not going to do good out here. Really weird. Okay, I got one right here.
Okay. I don't know if you can see them, but I got two containers of loofahs. I think I got all of them. I don't see any more. I even found this this one that's not doing too good. I think I'm gonna throw that one out. But two big things of loofahs. <sighs> okay, so now I'm done and I'm just going to let these sit up here until it gets really cool and then I'll, when it's time for me to start planting other things, I'll take them down. But right now it's just pretty as the vines continue to grow over the arcs. So that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got about 13 loofahs. So I'm going to let them turn yellow. Then I'm going to peel them open, get all of my loofah seeds. And anytime you grow loofahs one time and you collect the seeds, you have seeds for a lifetime with loofahs. It's well worth it. Loofah is part of the, um, of the squash family, I believe. So you can eat them. You can cook them when they're really small. And then when you let them grow, you'll have loofah sponges. You can use them for cleaning yourself or you can use them for cleaning dishes or cleaning other things. So that's it. Now I'm done for the day.